a narrator explains the story about how a renowned craftsman named Master Geppetto made the wooden boy called Pinocchio after losing his beloved son. One time in Italy during the Great War, a young boy named Carlo was playing outside when he saw some planes flying over and went to report about the fascinating scenes to his papa, Master Geppetto, who is a skillful craftsman. The two lived together, wanting nothing but each other's company, with Papa always telling his son a bedtime story about how telling lies leads to your nose growing long and long. Master Geppetto spends his time crafting from wood, accompanied by Carlo and teaching him to be patient, and that when one life is lost, another must grow. One day, Geppetto and Carlo head to church, and on the way, Geppetto is highly admired by the citizens for his intriguing designs like the crucifix which he is working on with Carlo, passing up the paints. Suddenly amidst the rain, the ground shakes and it's time they head home. As Carlo heads back inside the church to fetch his pine cone, which he forgot, some military planes heading back to base let go of their bombs to make their ballasts lighter, and one of them lands in the church and kills Carlo in the explosion, leaving his pine cone. Later, Geppetto buries the pine cone in representation of his son Carlo, and henceforth as the years passed, the world moved on, but Geppetto did not. And this is where the narrator comes in. A cricket named Sebastian Cricket, who is also a renowned writer, looking for the ideal place to set up his illustrious life story to paper. At long last, Cricket settles inside a pine tree, after sailing all these years alongside different famous sculptors and barristers. Later that rainy evening, seated outside of Sebastian's sanctuary, a sad Geppetto drowns in sorrow with beer, wishing he had his son back and the old forest spirits were watching him too. In anger, Geppetto cuts down the pine tree and carves out a wooden boy from it as Sebastian Cricket comes out of it. After Geppetto falls tired and sleeps on the floor, a magical forest spirit named Wood Sprite visits the room and brings the wooden boy to life. Wood Sprite also charges Sebastian Cricket to watch over the little boy and guide him to be good, since he already lives in his heart, and in exchange for doing so, Wood Sprite will grant Sebastian a single wish of his own choice. Sebastian agrees to this since he intends to use the wish to become famous, and Wood Sprite names the boy Pinocchio who will bring joy and company to the poor heartbroken man. The following morning, Geppetto surprisingly wakes up to a talking wooden boy who even introduces himself as his son, and is accompanied by a talking cockroach who lives inside his heart. Pinocchio is fascinated by the different things in the living room, which Geppetto hesitantly tells him of their names as he checks them. Papa locks the weird and ecstatic Pinocchio in the house when he goes to church, but Pinocchio disobeys and ignores even Sebastian Cricket, his advisor, and follows Geppetto to church. The villagers are scared of him, and when he tells them that he also has flesh and bones like them, his nose grows longer. The priest then orders Geppetto to take away the wooden boy, and at home, as Papa fixes Pinocchio's nose, they discover that the more he lies, the more it grows. Later, the priest and Officer Podesta visit them to check if the boy poses a threat, and Geppetto promises to lock him up at home. But Pinocchio will not be locked up and he vows to smash all the windows if he does. Podesta's son Candlewick also tricks Pinocchio into getting closer to the fireplace and the innocent boy ends up burning his feet, though he still laughs about it. Papa then puts Pinocchio to sleep and promises to make him some new legs the next day. Cricket also explains to the inquisitive Pinocchio that Carlo was the child Pinocchio lost and he now carries the pain with him. Cricket also continues writing his memoirs, and particularly the ongoing one, about imperfect fathers and imperfect sons. The following day, Geppetto makes some new legs for Pinocchio, and after helping him fix the crucifix, he hands the boy a special book belonging to Carlo, and Pinocchio promises to obey and be the very, very best, just like Carlo. Pinocchio is super excited as he heads to school, but he is intercepted by Count Volp, a former showman who plans to revive his carnival show, and he convinces him to go see the world with him and eat all the hot chocolate there. Volpe also uses his monkey to dissuade Pinocchio from Cricket's advice and they throw the Cricket behind and leave with him after forcing Pinocchio to sign an agreement. 
Later, Geppetto learns that Pinocchio didn't attend school and he also finds a squished cricket who points him to the carnivore. Geppetto soon finds Pinocchio being used as a puppet and they engage in a tug of war with Count Volp. And when they release him, the boy lands on the road and gets hit by a car driven by Officer Podesta. Pinocchio soon visits the afterlife where he meets some black rabbit guards playing card games who send him to the afterlife keeper Death, the sister of the wood sprite who gave him life. Death also explains to Pinocchio that the soul her sister gave him makes him immortal and he can only die and go back in a repeated cycle, and she soon sends him away. Upon returning to life, Count Volp asks that Pinocchio work for him, according to their signed agreement, while Officer Podesta thinks he will do fine as a soldier, as required by the Italian law for boys. Later that night, when Pinocchio feels disappointed in himself after his father called him a burden, he decides to join the carnival show so he could help Papa and not go to war. Pinocchio leaves behind Sebastian Cricket trapped in a jar and a note and asks Cricket to tell Papa that he loves him and will soon send him money. Count Volp takes Pinocchio in and promises to share his part of the profit to his Papa. The following day, Geppetto learns from Sebastian that Pinocchio went to the carnival and goes in search of him. Pinocchio travels with the show team and is loved by everyone, but he hides an inexpressible sadness since he is being overworked by Volp who is collecting all the money for himself. When Sebastian and Geppetto are searching for him across the sea, they're swallowed by a giant dogfish who keeps them alive in its belly. Once when the monkey, Spazatura, warns Pinocchio that Count Volp is just using him and he won't get the money, Volp scolds and beats the monkey. Pinocchio stops the abuse and Volp threatens him not to quit, saying he now controls him like a puppet. Later, Pinocchio gets to perform for the Italian leader, Benito Mussolini, but he teams up with Spazzatura to mock Mussolini so they could get revenge against Volpe's abuse. Pinocchio ends up getting shot by Mussolini's guard and soon revisits the afterlife, where he finds the keepers playing poker. Pinocchio is super happy that he cannot die, but death tells him that while he may have eternal life, his friends do not, and she sends him back. When he revives, he finds himself being taken by Podesta to the army training camp alongside some other young boys, including Candlewick, who is afraid of his father, and they become friends. During the training, Podesta asks his son, Candlewick, to shoot Pinocchio, and he refuses since the boy is innocent, and Podesta picks up the gun to shoot Pinocchio himself. However, they are soon faced with an air attack, and their base is bombed with the explosion, throwing Pinocchio away and killing Officer Podesta. Later, Count Volpe captures Pinocchio and torches him up for costing him his fortune. But Spazzatura intervenes to rescue the boy, and he attacks Volpe. The two then go over a cliff, and Volpe lands on a rock and dies, while Spazzatura lands in the sea and survives. Pinocchio also falls into the water, and he and Spazzatura are then swallowed by the dogfit, where they soon reunite with Papa Geppetto and Sebastian. The team plans to get out of the fish through the blowholes and to reach there, Pinocchio tells a couple of lies to make his nose long, and they cross over using it. The dogfish soon sneezes and sends them all out into the sea. When it tries to swallow them again, Pinocchio detonates a sea mine it had swallowed which explodes in its mouth, sending everyone else out into the sea, while Pinocchio soon joins the afterlife again. He then asks Death to send him back early so that he can save Geppetto from drowning, but he is told the fast return is breaking the rules which will make him mortal. Pinocchio then safely brings Geppetto to the shore, but he dies instead. Papa weeps bitterly for him. Sebastian Cricket is also sad, and he uses that one wish which the wood sprite granted him to bring the boy back to life. Pinocchio soon springs up to life and embraces his papa, as everyone celebrates. Later, Spazzatura joins the family, and Sebastian continues writing his intriguing memoir, noting that they never saw the wood sprite again. Geppetto aged, Pinocchio didn't, and in time, Geppetto left. One winter morning, Pinocchio also found Sebastian laying by the window, not moving, and he put him in a matchbox and carries him everywhere, right in his heart. Finally, as the film ends, the years passed and Spazzatura also passed away, 
leaving Pinocchio to venture into the wide world alone, and the world did embrace him back. During the mid-credits scenes in the afterlife, after Sebastian finishes recounting his fascinating life to the Black Rabbits, he performs for them a song from one of his famous memoirs, bringing the thrilling film to an end. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with another interesting movie recap. Until then, take care.